We're doing something different here. I have a guest, John Arnott Sr. He's going to walk us through using Google Analytics to make a better blog site. So stay tuned for that. to do. I'd like to share with you some unique aspects of Google Analytics, a tool that is uh, quite robust, strong, and very helpful in uh, managing the growth of a company in terms of traffic. So I'd like to show you some things that we do normally with our clients and see if this might be of some help. Sounds great. When you come, it uh, has a number of great features I want to share with you. Today, I'd like to focus on two areas that are very very helpful. One is acquisition, talking about all the traffic that's being acquired uh, for the site. And then secondly, almost as importantly, is the behavior once the traffic is on there, we can learn from. So let's start with acquisition. We'll go to acquisition, all traffic. And the one we want to look at is source and medium, which gives a broader exposure. The client I've chosen here has been working with us since June. And up in this corner, you can put the date that you'd like to look at. For this one, we're gonna do from June and through um, November 30th. You notice this chart here is the total amount of traffic and it can show us it in various day, week, or month. For us, you can do it weekly or on a monthly basis. So for, this, for today, let's stay with month. What we're showing here is the total amount of traffic. And if you hover over these dots each month, you see the total amount of user traffic. What we like to also do is look at what type of users are coming in. And Google provides us with a number of things that we can look at. First, you can click up here to add a segment. It opens up a list of segment names. First one we'd like to look at is organic traffic. Second one, see, look at paid traffic. And then also for this today, let's see about their referral traffic coming from other sources and just hit apply. So we can see here, this is a color coded form showing what the traffic is. And another thing that's valuable here is Google shows you the exact percentage of traffic for this, for this, for this source. Organic is close to 50% of the traffic. There's no paid traffic and it was about 6% of referral traffic. One of the things we look at right away is uh, the growth and what's happening. Uh, for example, in this period of time we looked at, there was a strong growth from when we first working with the client up until the first of the year. And then you see this drop off. Essentially, this is in fact, uh, the beginning and impact of the uh, COVID pandemic which hit a number of companies, especially in this industry. And then this showing is bottom out time. See these numbers here though. Each one of these now, when you hover over it, will give you the exact amount of traffic for that particular month or period. But what this chart is actually showing us is there's quite a bit of growth. But one thing I notice here is that there's really no paid traffic. So what we do here is uh, let's just for show you how you can do this, you can remove the paid traffic and let's see if we can find something that'd be a little bit more helpful. One is direct traffic. And I'll tell you what that is in a second. Direct traffic, here it is right now. It represents about 26, 27%. Direct traffic are those that have been to the site before. They know the site, they've been there. They may have bookmarked it at one time. They may have been a visitor at one time, but they know the site. And it allows us to see a couple things is in this traffic here, the direct traffic has been dropping off, but what's going very well here is that the organic growth is uh, growing on a nice steady course over this period of time. And it's representing almost 50%. If the traffic comes from an email campaign, somebody clicks on a link in an email that takes them directly to the site, what type of traffic is that? Oh, uh, that's referral traffic, John. It would be coming if you, for example, autoresponder email right here. Okay, great, thanks. This this section is, is good to know and uh, review is acquisition and what we're talking about here. It summarizes number of users uh, coming in from all di these different types. 
It also shows the number of new ones and how many sessions is helpful. This section here though is, is something I'll also like to jump into. It talks about what happens when the person become, comes to the site and one is in bounce rate and also any of these definitions are shown clearly up here at the top if you just hit that little question mark. In this particular case, what this says is that uh, 50, a little over 50% of the traffic coming from organic uh, doesn't move on. Let me show you something else I'd like to share with you. It's, I mentioned uh, behavior. Uh, let's go back to here. Google provides something to show specifically where traffic is flowing from inception all the way through the website. And it's very helpful. This is over the same period of time we just talked about. If we go and use source medium, it will show us the same categories we were just reviewing. For example, in this top one, the majority of the traffic, if you remember, 51% of the traffic is organic. It's showing here from most of it from Google. This lines here showing what this starting page is the page that they begin at, where they come into the site. This is the home page. And then these other interactions are the other pages that they're going through. These lines indicate the flow from one point to another. You can look with detail, you can highlight through some of these areas to get a glimmer as to what's happening, as you can see right here, where all the organic traffic is going to. It shows this number here is how much of the organic is the total of the number that actually hit the starting page, in that particular case, the home page. For example, so what does this say? The stark lines show that the moving on. The summary right here on this, if I hold this, leave it here. This says that uh, 8,000 of that traffic, um, that is 43%, moved to the next page. And drop off means that this is where they stopped or where they bounced. 40 or plus range or better is, is a good number for moving on. And it shows something. But then we can look at exactly what it is they, they went to. Uh, which will tell us a little bit more about what their interest is. This is a good sign when we're going and talking about the team and the services because someone coming off the home page is now interested in the organization itself, not just information. But also they've gone to, this is an article they went through that had a through rate of 66%, which says that this is a good article. It was actually talking about specific aspect of this medicine of this client. So this is a good thing. And then we can also look in even more details as we go and, and follow them through the other sites. We can do that for all of these. You can clear it with this function. You can go also to each one of these, highlight the traffic through each one, and shows us then uh, things that we can do to improve. This red line is something we're trying to get rid of. We, we just want to get less and less uh, drop-off rates. Um, that's what we're focusing on here. It also tells us some of the better pages. This particular case, uh, this particular case, this is one of the article page that's very popular. But when they got to the page, it had a high drop-off rate. So in this particular case, this, our team has looked at improving that page to improve to actually make it more appealing for the people that went there. And that's pretty much a summary of the behavior. So we, what we come from this is we'd be able to see where people are going, uh, what are the pages that are performing the best, uh, give indications of things that, that people are looking for that we should be writing to and improving. So it's a very helpful uh, page for that case. Is that helpful for you, John? Yeah, 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 but I do have some questions. Sure. So, so to reduce drop-off rates, to get fewer drop-offs, is that typically due to the page not having a good call to action or not answering the question the person intended? What causes drop-offs and what do we recommend to the team to do to improve that? Uh, the general consensus from, from our team as well as uh, also Google and others in, in the field is that somehow the the person didn't see what they were expecting to see on that page. 
It was generally they're looking for a, a topic or a subject and what led them there, either a website or, or some other source, wasn't what they expected to see. So we, we work at making sure that uh, the source is, is pretty much has the same message and is very clear what, what people are looking for. Uh, for example, ones that have a, a, a low uh, uh, pass-through rate, uh, the, there may have been something in that article uh, maybe just in the title, but the content wasn't what the, uh, the searcher was looking for. So it's usually what we would do is that we would look at we look at uh, other options. We'd write other other articles that would uh, be more appropriate for it. I see. So you're saying a drop off is a bounce. It's when somebody arrives, they don't see what they want, and then they leave as opposed that's, to they just don't continue on. That's right, and it's shown clearly with this red arrow. What we're looking for is we want we want to get this flow through here. Um, so, so what we're, yes, go, go ahead. ahead. No, please go ahead. So what this, what this shows me here is that the homepage is, is performing well. And that the, uh, a number of these pages here, we need to do some work to get some people to move forward. Uh, so we do look at these as well that are doing well. I mean, through traffic, um, the items here where, where, where the service pages are very important. People are interested in learning information, but new client generation is, comes down to how, how much I have, how much authority and trust I have in this organization. So reading about my team, reading my services and spending time there, uh, those things are extremely important for keeping the client, the prospect on the site. And when we do that, that's when generally there's a call to action and someone takes some action. So we'll work on the articles themselves can be worked down to pages we are very uh, we're always looking to attune the pages to make sure that the, the pass-through rates are are low. So we're going through, I mean, they're, they're, they're going through over 50%. Some that we can go right into the article itself that has been written or the page. And we know exactly how many times someone has gone to in this period of time and what percentage of traffic it is and what the bounce rate is. A services, for example, it means, says that 43% uh, drop off, which means about 56% of the people went forward after they read the services. So we, this is the level of detail you, that this Google Analytics tool can give us to look at uh, behavior flow. Simply put, we can use the results of these analytics. That is, the bounce rates, the time on page, and the drop off rate to change and evolve our blog content and our copywriting on a site. For example, when somebody arrives on a page and we see it's a really high drop off, first we're gonna look at the link that takes them there. Then we're going to look at the headline on that page, the imagery on that page, and the copy on that page, or if it's a blog, the content on that page. And we're gonna evolve it so that we either get more time on that page or what's preferred is it takes them to another page that is no more drop-offs on that page that's related because we want to get people to walk through our website one page at a time and to continually discover things that are interesting. I hope this video was helpful today. I know it was a little bit different. If you use different tools other than Google Analytics to do the same thing, I'd love to hear about it. Put it in the comments. As always, I'd appreciate a like and a share and if you really like what you see, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks again for your time, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.